So here are the sum of solutions, the primary suboptimal, which was still within normal range, but it's definitely treatable, needs to be treated to prevent it from going into overt hypothyroidism. So when we have the pituitary producing um, higher amounts of TSH and our thyroid's not responding, we need to primarily feed the thyroid gland. These are the nutrients, the list of nutrients essential for the production of thyroid hormones. Iodine, selenium, essential fatty acids, zinc, vitamin A, B complex, especially B2 and B3, and iron, but only if your ferritin level is low. Here is the secondary suboptimal. Here the pituitary is not producing TSH. Why is that? Just like the thyroid is not producing its hormones, the pituitary can be also deficient with nutrients for its, its production of TSH. So here's a few products. The cytosine PT, which is pituitary glandular desiccated uh, from neonatal tissue, also essential fatty acids, A, and again, iodine and potassium iodide. Um, so for secondary suboptimal, that's a you know, uh, combination of feeding both thyroid and pituitary. The bound thyroid hormones, we've already talked about this, primarily an estrogen dominance or a high estrogen problem. Estrogens are metabolized primarily in the liver, so the liver must be optimized, uh, function must be optimized through liver cleansing. Also weight loss, the fat tissue in our body uh, for women produces estrogen and also avoiding DHEA, which can be converted in estrogen. If your progesterone is very low, then I suggest using either sublingual prescription or some cream. Here we have, uh, again, the example of the poor conversion from free T4 to free T3, that happening primarily in the liver. Liver cleanse. Selenium, which is essential for the activation of the enzyme that removes one atom of iodine from the T4 to make T3. The same with zinc, manganese, and vitamin A. The solutions for the person who has primary hypothyroidism and is taking medication is, again, improving conversion, nourishing the thyroid, and uh, looking if there is the problem with the binding of thyroid hormones to estrogen. These would all be discovered through um, the full lab panel. For the secondary hypothyroidism, a fairly severe condition uh, usually requires uh, more medical investigation or intervention. And we covered what to do with this primarily in that slide that was um, regarding the secondary suboptimal hypothyroidism. Autoimmune disease, most important thing or underlying cause to treat. Um, again, the theory being that the elevated hydrogen peroxide causes inflammation and the way to reduce that inflammation is primarily through antioxidants. Glutathione being probably the most important one. You can apply cream over the thyroid you can also take selenium and N-acetylcysteine to help your body produce its own glutathione. Again, B-complex, especially rich in B2 and B3. Vitamin D, if your lab shows lower levels of vitamin D, and the person almost always has to be on a gluten or wheat-free diet. The poor binding of T3 to cell receptors we've talked about, vitamin D, vitamin A, and improving cortisol levels if they are low. Uh, vitamin D can be between five and 10,000, depending upon lab results, but it's important when taking vitamin D at those levels, you also take something called vitamin S and also calcium lactate. These are both covered in my book. For environmental, it's a matter of detoxification and prevention of exposure. You can use a lot of different products. I just put down UltraClear by Metagenics being one of better products. And also in the research from Paris, the use of iodine and potassium iodide. There's other environmental things as far as other halogens and are involved, like bromine and fluoride, iodine and potassium iodine being iodide being the primary treatment. For nutritional um, improvement, using trace minerals and sea salts, 
um, using cholesterol-rich foods, very important, eating adequate amounts of calories so that your metabolic rate doesn't slow down, uh, e eating low-carbohydrate uh, diet, um, uh, primarily because carbohydrates, especially simple carbohydrates, sugars and white flour, white rice, things like that, tend to uh, ca cause this roller coastering of blood sugar through the day. Um, the higher levels cause an increase in insulin, which is the hormone that produces uh, aging most quickly. And then the lower levels of, of um, blood sugar, um, as they fall, are falling into lower levels, will stress out the adrenal glands and eventually cause adrenal deficiency and eventually low levels of cortisol, etc. And to be sure, you eat plenty of protein. So a summary, must first of all understand the causes of your low thyroid hormone symptoms and the only way to assess this is through lab testing. Once you understand the causes through lab testing, you'll then be able to use the supplements to correct these causes. Supplements can also, or in addition to supplements, can also include bioidentical hormones, cortisol if need be, and also a thyroid prescription, uh, but I like to use, uh, recommend supplements to start with to see how much a person can improve first before using a thyroid prescription. So go to our website at advancingthyroidcare.com. You'll um, be able to download a couple of chapters from my book. One is the summary of the seven causes, which I've already covered, but there's more detail. There's also a downloadable chapter on breast cancer, which I think you'll find extremely interesting, uh, pointing towards the treatment and the prevention of benign breast disease, such as fibrocystic breast. We now know that benign breast disease is a high risk factor for developing breast cancer. I will show you information from around the world in the treatment of breast cancer by treating low thyroid hormone symptoms. The same causes of low thyroid hormone symptoms are also the underlying causes of breast disease and breast cancer. You can also download or order a soft cover of my book called Low Thyroid Hormone Symptoms, Seven Causes and Seven Solutions. Also on our site you can uh, find the uh, various lab tests that are recommended for the proper uh, diagnosis of low thyroid hormone symptoms. You can uh, take the um, list of tests to your physician, or you can order them online through our site. Uh, the instructions are there about how we can arrange for your having tests uh, no matter what state you're in, except for New York, Rhode Island, and uh, New Jersey. The supplements that uh, we've used with great success, highest quality supplements, are listed on our site as well with the ingredients, exact ingredients, so if you want to try to find those supplements, um, nearby where you live or if you want to order them off our website. Uh, consultations with um, physicians through our site as well as um, uh, life coaches and also coaches for uh, people with low thyroid hormone symptoms are available. Uh, please take a look at a presentation uh, similar to this uh, PowerPoint on breast disease, the relationship between breast disease, which is um, fibrocystic breast disease as well as breast cancer. Uh, their relation to uh, thyroid disease. Um, so help us um, spread the word, a very, very important word of hope and prevention and treatment of um, major conditions that our population is suffering from. Uh, inform your family and friends about this, um, these um, PowerPoint presentations. Just forward an email to them and um, hopefully we can kind of change the, turn the tide here with uh, a lot of chronic illness that's going on because of some underlying factors which are fairly easily uh, preventable and treatable. So thank you very much and hopefully someday we'll meet. Thank you.